Well, I guess we I like the whole plan. Okay, right. What I should say is the whole plan is if you guys want to drink, please go get a drink. If you are hungry and you want to go get food, go get food. Have them bring it down and interrupt me. That's fine. I love talking. It's not going to interrupt me. <laughs> um, if you want to leave because this isn't funny or I'm just boring you, that is also totally fine. Okay? Because I have your money. Now. <laughs> That's whatever. Uh, I'm sorry. Can we just acknowledge the best lyric of any song ever where it's like, um, honey, give me love. Not a facsimile of. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fax me love, honey. <laughs> so there was Stephen. Stephen had the voice of an angel. He had the face of an angel. I was going to marry Stephen Gately. I bought every single issue of Smash Hits. I read every interview with Stephen Gately. I ignored all the rest. Shane, he got hot later on. Keith met him once. We were both on crutches with the same injured leg. <laughs> it was a moment. Um, but yeah, Stephen was the man for me. When he came out, I thought it was just a phase. <laughs> when he got married, I was like, playing hard to get. <laughs> And then when he died, I was like, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> so if you'd like to come up and just uh, read my first diary entry, and nice and clear, please. <laughs> 1st of November, 1998, aged 12 and 4 months. <laughs> <laughs> Here's um, me. I read, um, I recently read Anne Frank's diary and she named her diary. So I was like, I'm going to pick a more fucking exotic name than Anne Frank. Sell me. Sell me. Sell me. She was my best friend. <laughs> I had no friends. Dear Sell me. Happy New Year. We got to stay up until half 12 a.m. I was, <laughs> I was so tired afterwards. <laughs> I got my period <laughs> on the 11th of December, 1997. <laughs> I adore Prince William. <laughs> Every time I see him, my heart beats faster. <laughs> well, got to go. <laughs> Love, Siobhan. P.S. I hate baby spice. Hi. Dear, dear, um, send me. Siobhan. 
age 12 and five months. Dear Selmine, <laughs> we were in Carmel yesterday. Anna came too. Grandma got some new trainers. <laughs> I got some gorge new school shoes. <laughs> Dad is 32, but it's okay, because Julie is 32 now, too. <laughs> That's my stepmother. Um, Dad said I can ask John about a cheap, good computer, and I might get it as a birthday and Christmas present. I hope so. Yesterday, I bought a lovely poster of a gorge, fluffy cat. <laughs> I still hate Emma Bunton. <laughs> <laughs> because Prince William likes her. <laughs> I want to see Titanic because everyone says it's brill. Even my Aunt Noreen. And she's got good taste. I was too young to know anything. <laughs> the doctor says I have to go on a diet. Ah. Well, got to go. Love. Siobhan, and I struck that out because I decided I was going to go by my real name, Selena, for a little while, but I forgot. So I struck it out. Um, yeah, sorry. Surprise! My name is Selena. <laughs> or Sinead. Or Sinead. Or whatever. Um, so, on that one. Um, so, that was probably, like, I'm not going to dwell on this because this is not what that sh this show is about. But at that age, the doctor said I had to go on a diet. I, I was quite an overweight child, I liked food. You know, that, that was just the way it was, and my brothers were really skinny because I ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> and when, just after I wrote this, my grandmother, she was like, you know what, I'm going to help you, Siobhan. I'm going to help you lose weight. And I was like, okay, oh, thank you, Grandma. And um, she had recently seen an ad for Slim Fast. <laughs> so my grandma, He's like, okay, let's try Slim Fast. The only problem with that was my grandmother didn't realise it was meal replacement. And not to go with your meals. So in theory, she was bulking me up. This went on for a month. My biggest threat to my brother was, I'll sit on you. <laughs> the worst thing I ever did was watch a documentary on whales and how they grow blubber for the winter. And I was like, it's blubber. Well, that was used against me for 10 years. <laughs> anyway, she stopped giving it to me after she read an article about it having tapeworm in it. And I was like, there's no fucking tapeworm. <laughs> I'm not losing any weight. I'm not losing any weight. Then, then we have time. That was a revelation for me, okay? Leonardo DiCaprio. We all remember that scene. Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> There's a lot of French girls here tonight, guys! <laughs>
Sometimes. Bet. <laughs> Sometimes you can wipe back your pen. <laughs> and I recorded the audio of Titanic. <laughs> Don't judge me too much. I stopped when this ship started sinking. I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> no one. Who actually gives a shit when the ship starts, starts sinking? You're like, ride more in the car. <laughs> like, you know, in that bit where the guy falls off and he smacks into the propeller. He's like, ooh, unnecessary. <laughs> we know they die. <laughs> And then you're watching, and then you're watching the end. And I know quite a lot of women here will have a problem with the fact that there was enough room. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I'm not saying I've read all the fan theories. <laughs> <laughs> However, Mythbusters <laughs> did do an episode on how Jack could have fit on the door. <laughs> this has stayed with me for quite some time. I don't know if you're getting that. <laughs> and, and as well, that bit where she's prying his frozen hands <laughs> off her <laughs> while saying, I'll never let go, Jack. <laughs> and her watching him sink. <laughs> and yet none of the other dead bodies are sinking. <laughs> July 1999. Dear Diary, I went to training on Monday and I played pretty well. Wow! <laughs> I'm actually good at something. <laughs> I went to Thurless yesterday and I got new soccer boots, soccer socks, and a Backstreet Boys album. <laughs> Love Siobhan. P.S. To have loved is like to have felt the whole world in your hands. <laughs> Cool. Is there anyone from Tipperary in here? Woo! Oh, you're fine. You went to the Earth line. Fine. Fine. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, to have loved is to, yeah. <laughs> Alright, on the 23rd of August 1999. Dear Diary, today are the Oklahoma auditions. Yeah, the fucking Earth line we're doing late mids. <laughs> Bought the school which had money. I was meant to go to the Earth Line, but my grandpa went into the wrong school and said, Oh, sure, it'll do. <laughs> That's again not a joke. April 2001. Dear Diary, I hate this feeling of insecurity. I've heard that it never actually goes away. Just imagine, in 20 years from now, <laughs> <laughs> I could still be a rattling cage. Ah! I have two years to fix this shit. <laughs> I have decided that I have decided that there are two ways to find eternal happiness. Oh. <laughs> he used to live with me and read my diaries for fun. One. <laughs> become the ideal female. <laughs> or to kill myself. <laughs> People become dramatic. <laughs> the latter of which is more difficult. <laughs> oh well, got to go. <laughs> Tenth of April, 2001. Dear diary. I think I need help. And you guys have been thinking that for the last hour. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about boys and sex. <laughs> I suppose the only way I could get both is to become a prostitute. <laughs> but that is so not my kind of thing. <laughs> Love, Siobhan. <laughs> Twentieth of April, two thousand and one. Dear diary, just think, in four months I'll be sixteen. Woohoo! Sixteen and never being kissed. God, that doesn't say much for my social life. As sad as this sounds, 
And in later years, when I read this, I'll cringe with embarrassment or say it to a room. <laughs> I really wish I knew what it was like to shift someone. <laughs> now, we have a lot of people who are not from Ireland in this room. A shift is to kiss someone. French kissing, as we say, hey Frenchies. <laughs> so that's what we shift and meet. I, that, this comes up a lot later. Um, so shift and, yeah, yeah. So that's kissing. So I would like to know what it would be like to do that. I know now. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> the song that's stuck in my head at the moment is On My Own. Oh, on my own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop that. <laughs> I'm listening to Late Night Love on Tip FM. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go and bask in my own misery. Love, <laughs> 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 Oh, we're getting to the good stuff. 17th of June, 2001. Dear Diary, the junior cert ended on Friday, and that meant that Dad let me go to Dundrum to the disco. You know Dundrum! Books! 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 <laughs> you never went to the third level. No. That was where the sex happened. <laughs> you didn't do the sex in books, Susan. Your husband is there, so you didn't. <laughs> oh, Susan, you don't know about that. <laughs> So, I really didn't want to go, but I had to, and my view still hasn't changed. You couldn't turn around without practically bumping into couples meeting non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> Including all of my friends. I knew they were fast workers, <laughs> but I never expected it to be that fast. After... <laughs> <laughs> After seeing them working their tongues like that, I'm traumatized for life. <laughs> I'm going shopping this week, and I'm going to buy some nice clothes to wear to the next one. And I'm praying I'll look good. <laughs> I won't let Grandma dress me for this one. <laughs> Finer points on that. My grandmother dressed me in. Um, John, are you there? You still there? Oh, you still there? Yeah, John. Grandma dressed me for my first disco. I look like a middle-aged woman going for a job interview. <laughs> there was a pink pinstripe top that she wore and grey trousers and some square toe flat shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been in fashion. <laughs> I don't want to read a diary entry. <laughs> I told Michael in my performance review last Christmas, I had six pages written on my first kiss. He meant a work journal. I had talked about my diary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a keeper. Um, so, you will only be reading these highlighted bits because I felt the need to put dialogue, okay? Okay. Okay? Sorry. Don't laugh in, in advance because it's really bad. And um, I actually sent someone a voice note on WhatsApp trying to practice this earlier and it was still really bad. Um, okay, so, guys. This is my first kiss. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> my pregnant wife is right there. It's okay, you can run quicker than her. <laughs> didn't type on this was I actually went back onto this date and wrote my junior cert results and it was four A's, five B's on the C and um, but then four months later CSP got upgraded got and I got five A's, four B's on the C. There you go John. <laughs> so 14th of September 2001. Dear diary, so sorry, Ted. We're not gonna act it out, don't worry. It's too hot. <laughs> this is not porn here. Dear diary, 
Last night I was sent on drum and it was the best thing ever. But I'm not going to spoil the story by telling the end at the beginning. So let's start. <laughs> by the way, word for word. <laughs> First there were auditions after school for the show. Then I went to Anya's house and Lorraine was there too. We went to dumb stores. And I bought makeup, etc. <laughs> yes, I know this is blah blah, but it's the lead up. <laughs> then we went back to Anya's to get ready, etc. <laughs> I had clearly just learned, etc. <laughs> we went to Carol's house, picked her up, and went to Dundrum. When we got there, it was so crowded that Sarah, Anne, and Bernie weren't there yet, so we waited by the door for them and Tara to arrive. When they came, cue boarding school nicknames, guys, this is so embarrassing. When they came, we all ended up getting separated. So most of the night was Anya, Lolly, Taz, Anne and me. Lolly and Taz. Lorraine and Carol met lads fairly early on in the evening, and then we all joined <laughs> up again. It was just after 12, and I was, are you checking your lines, Darren? <laughs> you are? Yeah, okay. I really admire your dedication to this. <laughs> <laughs> me and Anya were standing together with Carol. And I saw this total finer in a blue and black dress. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys remember the Inter Milan jersey? Yeah. It was that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. That was the one. Yeah, see, it's a great jersey! <laughs> I asked Anya if she liked him, and she did. So we asked Carl to go over and ask him if he would meet um, Anya or me. Just for my French people, this is what happened in the disco. <laughs> you gave the guy an option. <laughs> okay? So there'd be two of you, and you'd give the guy an option. Will you meet her or her? And then you'd pick one. You know? Generally, I was the one left over, but not this time. <laughs> 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 So, Carol had to look up at him because he was so tall. Anyway, I saw him looking over at us and I was having a laughing fit about something. I remember this, I was trying to be nonchalant. <laughs> <laughs> so then Carol ran over to us and said, Siobhan, he picked you! <laughs> I was lost for words. So all I could manage to say was, what? Then he started coming over. Carol practically threw me at him. Then he wrapped his arms around me. Darren! Method acting. She's okay with it. Okay. That says more about me than. Carol practically threw me at him. Then he wrapped his arms around me and I really didn't know what to do so I put my arms around his neck. <laughs> have to do, we can't do all the motions. Oh, right. He said. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I said. David, you? He's from Tip. <laughs> Sorry. David, you? <laughs> I didn't quite hear what he said. He asked me where I was from and I said, killing all. <laughs> then he asked, Do you want to go somewhere else? <laughs> I said, yeah. He led me over to the corner and then when we stopped, No, no, you don't have to be here. <laughs> you do not do that. He kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it gets so much worse than that. <laughs> It was full on and absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Fuck! I never knew someone's tongue could feel so good. <laughs> And my arms are around his neck. <laughs> Jesus, it was so fucking perfect. <laughs> <laughs> then I pulled away for a second so I could catch up with myself. <laughs> you okay? He asked. <laughs> uh, 
I nodded and put my head on his shoulder for a few seconds. <laughs> then he asked if I wanted to go over to the arcade machine. By the way, hindsight, that was the cigarette machine, okay? Because, like, there's so much of this entry that I was like, I actually remember this clearly, and I really am a romantic because I totally romanticize this entire thing. <laughs> Not that everybody does that with their first kiss, right? <laughs> <laughs> then he asked if I wanted to go over to the arcade machine. So he led me over, and I was almost by the machine, but not quite. <laughs> he had his hands tightly around my waist. Then I didn't want his neck to get sore, so I stood on my tippy toes. <laughs> and he moved me against the arcade machine. I started stroking his back and neck. And he moved his hands just a little lower than my waist. <laughs> Then I ran my hands through his hair, and he came a little closer to me. I know it does! I am well aware. I, I transcribed this. I made the, uh... I was feeling just so good that I pulled him really close to me, and it felt just so good. Then I kinda massaged the back of his neck, and he... He put his hands on my arse. <laughs> At first I got nervous, but it felt too good to stop. <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 you just stay there. <laughs> At a respectful distance. <laughs> He kind of flicked his tongue in and out of my mouth, and it was so sexy. <laughs> he used links. and I never wanted it to end. The feeling of his pinning me against the arcade machine was just so nice. <laughs> when he touched me, it was like magic. Here's the real culture bit there, right? When Sheena Fina Fall came! <laughs> I didn't want to leave. So for about 10 minutes after that, we were still meeting. <laughs> then I pulled away because I had to go and find the others. I have to go now. Thanks, bye. <laughs> most romantic thing he could have said, but he was just so perfect. <laughs> I swear I will never forget how good of a first kiss that was. It couldn't have been more perfect. It was just so fine. It felt so good when he kissed me and eased his tongue in. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> when I was shifting him, I was listening out for a song to remember him by. <laughs> and the first one I recognized was the Macarena. <laughs> Um, so I've never dated before, I didn't really know what to do, I had no idea how to be sexy. So I was living with my beautiful, my beautiful friend Debbie at the time, and Debbie was like, do you know what's sexy? Lap dancing. Oh <laughs> 
So So I think it was a Thursday night. Usually, Prosecco Thursdays, we used to call them. Yes, we did. And um, Debbie was like, I'm going to teach you how to not dance. Now, Debbie is an incredibly amazing dancer. Sober. <laughs> but I won't do the impression no, of you that much. No, 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 that's for a different show. Yeah. Um, so, Ian happened to come over. This is Ian. Say hi, Ian. Hi, hi Ian! Ian. <laughs> and so Ian happened to come over and Debbie's like, okay, let's do the lap dance. She moved the chair. She put it in the center. I'm not making you come up, don't worry. No. We're not doing it. <laughs> and she put it in the center of our dining room. And um, she got Ian to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. There's one way to not feel sexy. <laughs> it's to gyrate against a gay man's crotch. <laughs> In fact, Ian finds a female form repulsive. <laughs> and when someone is doing this face at you, <laughs> it stays with you. Debbie was undeterred though. <laughs> and then we got to talking about like, where do you meet people? And as Debbie said to me once, like, I don't even know where you meet people because everyone I've met at the bus stop has turned out to be a complete freak. <laughs> Check out my Twitter hashtags, things my friends do. Okay, right, I'll look into Tinder and I'll see what this is about. And I was kind of like, oh, cool. you don't really have to fill out a profile. You pick some pictures where you look pretty. So it could be a bit of a confidence boost. Oh yeah, swipe left, swipe what? It's like, swipe right, all this kind of thing. Um, and it was full of compliments. Like, my particular favorite was... <laughs> station at Sore Street, <laughs> just after my friend had killed themselves, so I was ready for a date. Yeah, I know, right? That was like a real <laughs> Um. So yeah, so he was like, well, we can cancel the date. I was like, no, I need to have some fun. And um, so off we went to Joyce Bar, and uh, we were sitting there talking. And it was going really well, and he was a really nice guy, and he, do you know what, he still is a really nice guy. And uh, we were just sitting there talking, and his phone had died. And he's like, oh, let me Google something um, on your phone. I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? We had recently. So he typed G into Google. And the last search, because me and Debbie were having a chat, was genital warts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Never let them use your Google. <laughs> he just looked at me and said, "Where is he?" I was like, 
And no less than five minutes later, I had left my phone, like, I'd left it open. It was like that. And I no longer keep the, you know, the way your messages can show up the whole message and stuff. This does not happen anymore after Debbie <laughs> texted me the following. Hi, Shiv. Hope the date's going really well. If you're planning on bringing him back, don't let him use the upstairs toilet because it's blocked. <laughs> <laughs> the story that any of my close friends know. The man you got to. Okay, so the moral of the story of Tractor oh. is, if you are ever going on a first date, especially a blind one, do not go to Sinnott's on Stephen's screen. <laughs> because if you say you need to go to the bathroom, you can't leave without them knowing, because they are at the back. So you've got to go that way to come back, and you will pass them. So I learned this, okay? What's on the other side? What? There's a left passage and a right passage. Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. Unfortunately, we had sat at the bar in the no, centre. No, we actually I know. <laughs> so, yeah, so this was an after work thing. I had very little money. It was like the day before payday. I was like, ah, screw it, let's go. Let's go on this date and see how it goes. So I walk in, straight away I'm like, there's no chemistry, this is, this is just, but I'm going to be nice to this guy because he's done nothing to me. Who knows, maybe after a bit of conversation. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so we were chatting, I got a coffee, because I was like, I think I need to stay sober on this one. And, <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> And so we were just talking away or whatever, and we were talking about hobbies. I was like, well, I like basketball. Just bring it back to the Baylor games. Um, I was like, I like basketball. Yeah, really good. So I was like, I like basketball or whatever. And he goes, yes, I'm skilled with uh, Japanese war swords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of like, you know, maybe this isn't something you should say to someone on their first date because that woman was just murdered after a blind date in Tala, whatever. And he goes, oh no, that was done with his bare hands. That's not how I would have done it. <laughs> so I don't like, uh, it's actually sort of a topic that came up in work last week about like this over politeness. I did that thing on a date where I should have said, okay, nice to meet you. I was like, no, 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 I'm going to stay because I don't want to be rude. <laughs> I'm going to stay in public places. <laughs> and um, so I said, okay, I really need to get rid of this guy, but I don't know how. So first of all, I started talking about suicide because I was like, that will make him run. <laughs> He did not. <laughs> then I was like, oh my god, the cost of childcare when you <laughs> Sorry, Patty, about this, but I use this. I was like, I need a new baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that could possibly turn this man off, I talked about. He was still sitting there laughing at all. I was like, oh my god, this is really going on forever. So I was like, okay, um, we're running out of things to talk about. How about we ask each other questions? And he said to me, okay, I'll go first. <coughs> and he said, what's your guilty pleasure? To which I replied, no, you see. <laughs> I will find you. No, no, I was over West Side. I went straight on to Lee. Michael Collins. <laughs> Can I get a whoop whoop for Michael Collins? <laughs> We're all a bit Republican. <laughs> And so I said, Liam Neeson, he was like, all right. And I said, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, tractors. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what do you mean, tractors? Because, <laughs> like, you know, I've seen this documentary about men and cars, you know, I'm trying to make a joke out of it. He proceeded to spend the next 10 minutes trying to think about ways you could have sex with a tractor. <laughs> with a tractor? <laughs> 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 
and he settled on something with the windscreen wipers. Oh, oh my god. god. Again, I wish this was a story. <laughs> I think you should tell Trina. <laughs> that is your only issue to discuss. <laughs> hey, Tor! <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, tractors. And then his next question to me was What is your most embarrassing sexual experience? Yeah. Question number two. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, falling asleep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, I really didn't want to ask, but I had to say, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is just the one date. Yeah. Oh, and um, he said, well, it had to be the time I brought my girlfriend Antonia back to my house. <laughs> I was living with my parents at the time. And you know, we had just had sex and I got up to go to the bathroom and I turned on the light. And I was like, oh my god, I'm covered in blood. <laughs> Antonia, Antonia, are you okay? <laughs> and she wasn't okay. <laughs> and we had to call an ambulance. Because I had burst but if you want to impress a woman <laughs> It's blocked. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I was trying to change the subject, and I went, "Oh, what is the most romantic thing you've ever done?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it would have to be staying with her while she was in intensive care for three days. <laughs> And um, he goes, oh, I'll walk you. And um, so we were walking along, and all I could think was, I literally have enough bus fare to get the exact bus home. Um, now, I would know if I hopped on a bus and said, can you let me on one stop? I need to get away from this freak. The driver would be like, yeah, sure, no problem. Whereas this time I was like walking along. Ian, I do need to borrow you for a second. You don't need to speak. <laughs> so we were walking along, and I had my, you know what to do. I had my hands. <laughs> I had my I had my hands in my pocket. And then he kept trying to hold my hand. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was trying to pull my hand out of my pocket to hold it. And then he settled for just linking with me. Oh. Like <laughs> I'm also single. Trying desperately that I'm up here as well. So we walked along anyway. So we walked along. And we got to his car, which was definitely one of those I'm like, oh he's compensating for something. And uh, we got there and um, he looked at me and I looked at him. And I realized in this moment that I <laughs> was leaning against the wall of the living room. <laughs> That's why I had two choices. <laughs> 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 I kissed him, 
or risk him pushing me in the living room. <laughs> we know what happened. <laughs> he jumped the in. thing you can swim. <laughs> it was an experience. He drove away. I walked a different direction home so he wouldn't know where I lived. And uh, he followed the date up with a text message that said, Dear Miss Naughty Secretary, <laughs> I'm a personal assistant, bitch. <laughs> Dear Miss Naughty Secretary, thank you for a wonderful evening. XOXO. Block. <laughs> and that is Tractor. <laughs> We have the beautiful doctor. <laughs> and um, against my better judgment, I met up with the doctor even though he told me he was a massive James Blunt fan. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> and um, so we met up, that was grand, we just had a walk around town, that was fine. But for our first proper, proper date, he didn't want um, my friends to worry about me, so he messaged Debbie oh. to say, just taking her up the Wicklow Mountains for a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie was like, oh, grand, I know where you're going, that's great. <laughs> and I had no idea on this surprise date, so we actually did go up the Wicklow Mountains. I felt very Elaine O'Hara. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I listen to a lot of murder podcasts. My boss is really concerned about it. Tonight's really gonna help. So we went up the Wicklow Mountains. Then I met this guy who we called the Butcher because he was a butcher, not because he was a murderer. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'll have a pizza. And I ordered a pizza. And then I realised I'm on the wrong bus home. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm hammered. It's 6 p.m. My pizza could arrive before I do. <laughs> what do I do? So I panicked and I got home. And then the pizza hadn't arrived. So I ate everything in the house. And then the pizza arrived. And then I fell into a food coma. And then two hours later, I woke up hungover and finished the pizza. Because <laughs> it wasn't just a pizza, there was garlic cheese fries. <laughs> and then because I was too hungover to stand up, Uncle John, I don't drink. <laughs> and because I was too hungover to stand up, I crawled to my bedroom and I was feeling particularly lonely, so I thought, you know what? Again, I told this guy this on the date. Do you know what I'll do? I'm a fashion person out of my doing. <laughs> It's not the same. I wish I still had my pregnancy pillow. And I told him this, and he's just looking at me. And um, I got a second date after that guy. <laughs> um, and we said, you know what? Let's go to Wheelands on a Sunday night and go crazy. So we walk into Wheelands and it's pretty bloody empty because it's Sunday. And, um, and we were just having a drink, and Queen was like, oh my god, that guy's looking at you. No, he's not. She goes, no, he is. He's like, no, he's not. And the next thing, this guy walks over. And he starts talking to me. I'm like, oh my God, am I being approached in a bar? In a bar? By a man? This has never happened before. <laughs> and uh, he was like, hi. And I was like, hi, my name is Siobhan. Um, and we started talking. And I said, what do you do? And he goes, oh, well, I'm a pilot. Woo! I fly an Airbus. Oh, woo! Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, I work for Airbus. I work for Airbus. I was like, so why? We've got this in common. It's great. And then he goes, yeah, but my dream is to fly Boeing. Oh. 
Yay. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, we started talking. And But the one thing I've learned from working in the aviation industry, and this is a tip for all you single girls out there, and I'm sorry, Rachel, I know your dad is a pilot. And Michael, I'm sorry, I know you're a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Just covering all things. So. Um, before you dabble with the sky gods, <laughs> always check for a wedding ring or a tan line. <laughs> Can I have a yeah? Yeah? Yeah. And Elaine was the one who first gave me that advice, and then Lorraine gave me that advice later. I've lost the ring. Oh my god, I've lost the ring. She's, oh, she's okay. She's, she's okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. She's there. She should be back. But yeah, so you always check for a wedding. And he didn't have the tan line, he didn't have the wedding ring, and I thought, oh my god, this is cool, and he's really nice, and he's Canadian, so that's exotic, and wow, okay, cool. So we spent the whole night chatting, and that was fine. And then suddenly he was like, oh, will you come back to my hotel with me? And I was like, I'm, I'm you know. <laughs> It's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle John, I don't do that. <laughs> and um, so then he was like, no, 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 definitely come back with me. If you want to follow me there, my room number is 747. No. <laughs> 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 oh, So I was just like, no, 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 I'm not. He goes, here, come on, let me buy you food. Now, I am a cheap date, but buying me a three-in-one from Charlie's doesn't mean I'm going to have sex with <laughs> um, Well, actually, just back, just looking at you, there was a second time I was come on to in a bar, and he was actually, like, the most irritating person I've ever met in my life, and he did not leave, and I was hammered, and he just kept trying to do things to my face. <laughs> and eventually, this is one of Ian's favourite stories. Eventually, I just turned to him and went, I don't fuck nice oh, boys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wine. And we were sitting on the couch. And we were talking. <laughs> and, um, and then we were kissing. Because I was like, you know what, I'm bored. <laughs> and then, <laughs> in his attempt to woo me, <laughs> I suddenly, oh, oh this is happening, isn't it? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
my uncle is wishing he was not over there. <laughs> my uncle will not be telling his wife or my stepmother any of these stories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, you know when you're, you know, you're, you're drunk. <laughs> to always be perfect. And you have all saints booty calls stuck in the head. <laughs> <laughs> bring it on, bring it, bring it on. Uh. <laughs> and, you know, you're 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 kissing and you're like, oh, this is nice. And 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 they have a little bit closer to you and you're like, And with the age I am, everyone is getting married, and everyone's having babies, and well, I've been having a lot of funerals, and I'm in work, and I'm planning my funeral with my friends. <laughs> and my friend Jen turns to me, and she's like, "You're kind of making me a bit uncomfortable." <laughs> I'll talk about the one thing that'll definitely happen to me. <laughs> oh, you look sick. Um, the only problem is, like, it's, you know, Abby. You know, she sees her dad settling down and he's really happy with Nora. And Nora's a wonderful woman. And Paddy's very lucky to have found someone who will take mom. <laughs> But he's a fantastic father. Um, you know, and Abby, Abby would really like to see me. Abby actually took the picture for the poster by saying, Mommy, pretend you have a boyfriend. <laughs> Throwing shade at seven. And, um, but the only problem is that Abby, the main person Abby wants me to settle down with is Ian. <laughs> and unfortunately, the most attractive thing about me for Ian is my American passport. <laughs> San Francisco, you said yes. San Francisco, yeah. Um, for no other reason other than my love of Siobhan. Sneaking out like Liberace. <laughs> If you say, let's adopt this 20-something-year-old man, <laughs> I'm not going to worry. Um, <laughs> you know, like, Abby, Abby's amazing. She's like, it's weird to say your kid is like one of your best friends, but she really is. Unfortunately, though, like, her new favorite thing in the world to say to me is, Mommy, Mommy, can you do this? And then she drops into the splits. <laughs> and it's like, all I can think is, honey, if Mommy could do that, she wouldn't be sick. <laughs> 